So you want to make some concept art, but you don't want to mess around with perspective. Luckily, we have 3D stuff, and that can solve a lot of perspective. But you don't want to mess around with 3D stuff because it's a whole program that you got to learn. And you would rather just draw some stuff, right? Uh, Blender has a lot of tools where you can now kind of mix and match these with a very simple amount of finagling and very quickly bust out some concept art for, say, uh, Blender or a cool spaceship. Just some basic stuff you should know is that your middle mouse wheel is going to navigate everything that you need. So middle mouse wheel orbits around here. I can also use shift uh, to pan with middle mouse and middle mouse wheel in and out to zoom. You can also use control middle mouse wheel to zoom. Another thing that's handy to know, because theoretically a concept art piece is just a single picture, is how to use your camera. So this is the camera, which I get to by hitting zero on my number pad. I think you can also use the tilde key uh, to switch your view. So if I hold this down, I can go view camera. And then thirdly, I'm going to set my view so that uh, my camera is always going to match my view. So I hit N which brings up the uh, panel here. What's it called these days? The sidebar. I'm going to go to the view option here and on view lock I'm going to choose camera to view. So now whenever I zoom around my camera matches. So now that I have that I'm only going to use one tool to generate this model which is the new uh, poly add tool which is really cool so this is a way to really quickly add stuff and I have to do a little bit of setup to get this the way I want because I want this to be some sort of symmetrical ship so that I can do this really fast but if you don't know how this works you click on this tool it's going to temporarily take you out of that tool so if you want to turn it off make sure you go back up to the default move tool but this snaps to forms and it lets me very quickly do something like that to get some sort of shape. Now I'm going to go back to this move tool and I'm going to put both of these cubes into a new collection by hitting M. Move to new collection. I'll call this uh, ship. And now if I'm inside of this collection and I create another cube It's automatically inside of that. Why do I do that? Because now I'm going to cheat and have a duplicate collection that is scaled so that I automatically get that symmetry. Uh, this is going to solve the problem of having all of these objects individually symmetrized. It will just make it so that I have one instance and it solves all my problems. So I'll hit Shift A for Add Menu. I'll go down to Collection Instant and there's my ship. And I'll throw that in the default scene collection. So this is a single object now, a point instance, that represents everything that's inside of my ship collection. So I'll hit SX negative 1 to scale this on the, on the x axis by negative 1. And now it'll show up by default as a clone. So if I go up to my items, you can see on the sidebar panel, scale is now at negative 1. Let's go back to that ship option. And again, I want to be in this collection so that new objects get created there. And I'm going to delete some of these starting ones. And I'm just going to sort of rough out some idea of a spaceship really quick. And you'll notice that it just automatically bumps in. I can do some modification using the default grab, scale, and rotate tool. And you can start to. Just block in an idea.
There's other tools you can use as well, such as cylinders. Or maybe I'll throw some sweet engine parts on here. If you hold shift, you can do it. Uh, if you hold shift, it'll lock to the middle. And if I hold alt, it'll transform from center. So you get to some point where you have some sort of blocked in ship like this. And you could go in and start modifying this even more, but you know, I don't want you guys to necessarily have to learn Blender's editing tools today. So we'll call this good. Okay, maybe one for this little ship one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks like a spaceship. And so the nice thing is I can now just use my camera and get a position that I think looks cool. I can do a trace over. I could also gently, just to further understand this, because we're only trying to get to a point of blind art. I don't care about any rendering stuff um, because I'm going to just draw that by hand. But it's nice to know that you can select your camera and go to the camera tab here. No, there's the camera. And change the focal length millimeter of your camera and this can give you different looks so um, 16 millimeter is going to be much more zoomed in which means that if i zoom in here you get that sort of extreme look which might be a lot more fun to paint you could also set this to orthographic and uh, once you do that you have to just automatically scale this but if you wanted to have something where um, If you wanted something where it was more of a like isometric game or orthographic game, now you could render it from this and it would automatically be there. I'm going to stick with that perspective look because this is pretty cool, right? And maybe one or two uh, additional cylinders here. Just something to add, a little bit of detail. There's other ones too such as uh, spheres and so now now I have to draw all this that sucks I don't want to draw this well there's some more cheating we can do because we're trying to just get through this really fast I'm gonna start by turning on something in the render properties here which is called uh, Freestyle, not grease pencil. Freestyle is a line post processing effect that will automatically just make some lines show up on this. And I'm then going to, after enabling that, I'm going to go to my view layer properties, which determines how uh, layers get generated for compositing later. And I'm just going to go down to freestyle and down here, I'll choose as a render pass, which will make it so that I can have nothing but this object. There's probably an easier way to do that. Like just only have, like turn on only green set, um, freestyle. There's all these other settings, but I don't care about them. So what happens now when I go to compositing and I hit use nodes, I'm gonna use that freestyle line as the entirety of my composite image. Well, just to render this really fast so that you can see that happens. F12 to render. It's going to render a spaceship. And at some point, when the grease pencil is done, it'll throw that on there. Here in the render panel, I'm going to have used uh, compositing use nodes turned on, and I want to have this backdrop. Which means that if I control click on this or control shift click on this, it'll add a viewer node so that I can see this. You can also find this by going to uh, output viewer 
and just manually connect to that. But what happens when I look at my freestyle line? Hey, look, instant lines. At the very least, a baseline that I can start drawing on, perhaps. Uh, but I want this to be on top of a pure white image, so I'm going to hit Shift A, uh, color alpha over, and I'm going to have this first image be my grease pencil strokes, and, or my first image be pure white, and my second one be freestyle. And now I automatically have a spaceship ready to go. So when I hit F12, now I can save this image. Image. Save as. And of course, I'll just throw it on my desktop as Untitled 2. That's really nice and helpful, right? But wait, there's more. Having done that, I can now go back to my default layout. And I'm going to turn all this stuff off. I'm also going to turn off uh, camera lock. <laughs> and file import. No. Uh, I'm going to use Shift A, add a, an image, no, an empty, which is going to be an image. And it needs to pick that image. So I have to go to the empties settings and I click open. Find that untitled2.png and it opens it up. There it is. Now, this is a new feature in Blender 2.92, which will make it so that I can just start drawing on this right away. I'm going to hit 7 so that I'm in the top view. And I will choose Object, Convert, Trace Image to Grease Pencil. What this will do is it's going to look at this black and white image and kind of like trace bitmap and other programs it'll just automatically output something so I'll just crank the resolution up to 20 and you know what I'm just gonna hit OK and see what happens yeah I don't like that object try convert trace point bitmap let's set the thickness to 1 and And that seemed to work pretty good. So now I have a grease pencil object that I can paint on, which is really cool. So this is now a grease pencil object, which is Blender's 2D animation drawing stuff. And it has a single material, which I think is set to hold out. If I, if I can up that, I can see it's a little thicker. And in Grease Pencil, I can now go to Draw Mode, and I can actually start drawing on this. So now I could go in and start thinking about So now, I can just go in and because so much of this perspective is figured out for me, it becomes pretty easy to do the rest of it, you know? Oh, 
that's gonna fill out gross. I'm gonna create a new material and use this. Just black stroke. Or, alternatively, you can just bring the stuff into Photoshop at this point. So, so much of the hard aspects of what you're trying to draw are now solved. And ready to be worked on. I should probably be doing this on like a pencil layer and then tracing over it, but you get the gist. Fun.